I'll bet some of you are waiting for a new intro, right? <laughs> Welcome to yet another exciting episode of Way of the Brush. With me, your host, Chris, a.k.a. Mini Wargaming Chris, a.k.a. The Name Butcher, a.k.a. I don't know, I got nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> and so welcome back folks I was away for a little bit Busy with family and such As you know As we all tend to be at times You know it's not a crime right I know unfortunately some of you guys Had to hold out for your Way of the brush fix But we're back We're back on I didn't get a chance to get a new up, uh, intro Created As it was just you know Really really busy And you know just It just wasn't in the cards But and also, I was having a bit of trouble, because some of you may have heard some of the music that was playing that my brother had created for a new, new intro, and I was just having a bit of trouble, you know, getting the imagery and getting it all right. But now, I, I a bit of inspiration last night, last night, a little bit of inspiration last night, and I think I know what I'm going to do for an intro. It'll be, it'll be mellow, it'll be calm, mostly, and yeah, I... I've got a pretty good idea what I'm going to do. And so, for some of you who are not familiar with Way of the Brush, this is the most informative, entertaining, 120 minutes on the internet, on the wargaming, painting, terrain subject. Lifestyle. The wargaming lifestyle. We'll just call it the wargaming lifestyle from now on. As I, I really don't know what else we could call this. Because... We're not just a painting show, we're not just a terrain show, we're not just a giggles and laugh kind of show, we're all of the above, we're all war gamers, we all enjoy many aspects of, of war gaming, so we'll call it the war gaming lifestyle, because it kind of is, because we had a visitor yesterday, um, uh, Terry from uh, Geek and Sundry, she was in yesterday. And with her husband, and I got a chance to sit and talk with him, and you know, he's a great fellow. Meet Terry, awesome, great gal, and she is as small as she does appear to be. Uh, she's quite tiny; she could fit you right in your pocket. But it was, you know, it was great having them here. You know, uh, I believe they filmed some Life of a War Gamer thing. I don't know, but enough on that. Had a chance to sit down with her husband, um, and as we, were, you know, we're talking, and I, I was realizing, like, you know, a lot of people. You know, unrelated, but we were talking about tattoos because he has a big eight points of chaos on his arm. And I got to thinking that, yeah, it really is the Wargamer lifestyle when we are permanently applying ink to ourselves, showing off our allegiances or our fandom to the public as far as, you know, what we're into. And when your, you know, your personal kind of interests you're broadcasting out to the world as to, you know, what you like and what you're into. That's pretty much a lifestyle. That's a lifestyle. And I think, I think it is quite apt that we, we start calling it the war gaming lifestyle because for us fanatics, you know, we live for this. This is, you know, we work our nine to fives and then we sit in our little caves, paint, assemble, play, dream, Get inspired by what have you. And yeah, we have fun. That's the important part. And I think, you know, war gamers, even the really competitive folk, you know, we're all about having fun. And so I think we're a jolly kind of folk. And so the war gaming lifestyle is a jolly kind of lifestyle. Not unlike pirates. I don't know where that came from, but anyway. <laughs> so enough catching up. <laughs> Let's see who's in the comments and the chat. It's not really a chat room. I got to quit calling it the chat because we're not really chatting here. It's just, it's the comments section, right? But I mean, we're live, you know, and I can see a whole bunch of you are already here. I can see Daniel Ebling, 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 Daniel. I don't think Daniel's been able to make it to a couple live shows. I think he's been working or something like that. But anyway, Mr. Mark Hill, Ido Gihama, huzzah. <laughs> Demi Doss D. Demi Doss D. I don't recall the D being at the end before. I thought it was a Demi Doss with an X. 
I don't know. <laughs> I'm lost now. <laughs> Five minutes into the show and he's already lost. Ido Gihama, internet monkey boys, heed my advice. Take off your pants and slide on the ice. Whoa, what? <laughs> I think we're getting a little too friendly now, Ido. Nathan Barraza. Saturdays at work are extremely slow without Chris and the monkeys. Thank goodness it is back this week. Yes, thank goodness. I had a bit of fun. A bit of fun. I had a whole lot of fun. My brother was in two weeks ago. Got a chance to take him around. He'd never been to this region of Canada, so it was kind of nice showing him and his wife around. Get some pictures of the guy. You know, he did uh, some music for me. And my little sister is up as well, and so I got the chance to show her some of the sights. And then uh, a couple days later, my mother comes up. And so it's just been really busy two weeks for old Chris. Didn't get a whole lot of paint done, as you probably noticed, like on the channel, I didn't get a whole lot of videos done. Um, I did manage to get some painting done Thursday night. I did another airbrush noob, so expect that one soon enough. Uh, actually, I, I would have posted it yesterday, but for some strange reason, YouTube was being goofy and it didn't show up until today that it was done doing whatever it was doing. I don't know. It was, I don't know. YouTube, what can you do? You know, I, was, I, I expected it because it was a Friday as well. And Friday, I imagine, is quite busy with everybody else's Ghibli gook and garbo. <laughs> But yeah, I'll be posting another video, an airbrush noob, soon enough. Uh, just a little bit of a spoiler for everybody. It's going to be Striking Scorpions. I'm going to try and get a little bit more of my Eldar done. Uh, I've, I've come to the resolution, as well as getting my War Machine stuff done. Um, yeah, Chris has got to get, get some more of his own stuff done. And I also have some side projects that I want to do. I have um, one of the... Uh, large resin kits from uh savage forge uh got it when he was when he was still part of ichiban and uh, it's this big like marine character and he's holding an orc head and he's got a big sword and it's a really really great sculpt and i've, I've been dying to get you know cracking on it and maybe i'll have to get started on that maybe i'll make a couple videos on working with large resin kits i don't know i'm not really an expert on large resin i'm but I mean, it's, you know, small resin, large resin. I guess maybe, maybe I am because, I mean, I've done a lot of Forge World kits and the Savage Forged uh, kits are, they're not the same, but they're the same color as resin, but they're the, they're not terribly soft, but they're pretty good quality resin. You get lots of detail out of his kits. He's got a few other kits I've been interested in too. But anyway. <laughs> uh, Dalgreth. It's been so long. Two weeks. I know it is two weeks. Long time. The General Tank. Hey, Chris. Hey, everyone. Eric's Coins. Hooray, you're back. Finally. <laughs> Headshots. Yay, Chris is back. I have coffee, Fruit Loops, and away the brush. Life is good. <laughs> Fruit Loops. I, I like Fruit Loops, too. I like Fruit Loops. Um, Captain Crunch. I, I never really could get into Captain Crunch. Uh, what the heck is the other cereal? Lucky Charms. Lucky Charms. Um... Although I find that when I'm biting into the little marshmallows, they make that squeaky sound on your teeth, and that just kind of like sends like you know vibrations up the skull, and it just you know it's not very fun. I I'm not a fan of squeakiness on my teeth. <laughs> Isaac Neal, howdy howdy. <laughs> Ido Gihama, wargaming fashion with Chris. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. We'll see. Tolo, I'm here. We can start now. <laughs> Lancaster 66222. Hi, Chris. Hope you're well. Did you watch Lancaster take off on Monday? Did you watch the Lancaster take off on Monday? No. Where was that? There was a Lancaster taking off? Was it in this region or was it like on TV or something televised? I don't know. No, I didn't, I didn't see that. See, I'm... I'm in my own little world at times, and so I don't know what's going on in the world. <laughs> Grez. Grez Gors. Grizzy. Grizzy Gors. Grizzy Gorzies. Jeez, I can't even say that. Grizzy Gors. I could sit here for half an hour trying to pronounce that. Grizz. Grizzy Gors. Or Grizzy Gors. S. Oh, 
Hi, Chris. <laughs> Hi, Grizzles. <laughs> Dave Battaglia. Woo hey, everyone. Hey. Dave Battaglia, does that mean that the Hells Angels are really just a bunch of gamers? Yes, it does. They are. They are a bunch of gamers. <laughs> they play their games. We'll play ours. You know? It's uh, plots within plots. Ploys within ploys. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, Eric's Coins. Hi, Dave. Hope to see you with the Mini Wargaming gang doing bat reps again soon. Yeah. Be nice. When are you coming up again, Dave? I don't know. Leave a comment below. <laughs> Mad Larkin. Hi, everyone. Mad Larkin. He's one of my favorite characters in the Gaunt's Coast. Mad Larkin. I was... I was so sad. Mark Hill. Hi, David. Uh, well, everybody's just saying hi now to each other. Jeez Louise. <laughs> Matt Larkin. Hi, everyone. You already said that, Matt. Don't spam the comments. Tolo, the NSA are parsing it, Chris. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Could very well be. Dave Patelli, add Chris. Do painting tutorials on painting up Lumen Rust and Bane Blades. Looks at the tanks on the shelf right over his shoulder. I know. And that was, and all that was donated uh, by my good buddy, um, Jim. You I remember episode, I don't know, whichever it was. Fella comes out, big beard, no shirt. That was my buddy, Jim. He brought that stuff up. And I've got sprue upon sprue within a container over here of models. Uh, Jim, Jim's a crazy fella. And if he's watching, yes, Jim, you are a crazy fella. And... Yeah, I don't. I don't think I thanked him enough for dropping that stuff off because some of the stuff I've used, I think, in a few tutorials, but otherwise, uh, yeah, I've got to, I've got to do something with it. Because here's a real fun piece he gave me. This one's really fun. This piece. Now I don't know what this kit was from initially. Hey, something broke on us. Somebody broke my damn tank. Somebody's playing with my stuff. Nobody plays with my toys. Anyway. <laughs> so he brings this model over. Okay. Now I couldn't, I was going to try and attach the barrel, but the barrel's not attached. And, you know, I was thinking about like painting this up because it's just, it's just a darn looking, cool looking kit. It's got all sorts of details here. He's got a little driver's seat. Now I'm sure a bunch of you, um, you know, World War, I want to say this is World War uh, Two, but just the crazy nature of it. And this looks like something like the Germans would have made. So I, I'm, you know, like I love my World War Two history, but I honestly have no idea what this uh, gun carriage was about because it's tank treads. And I would have thought like the Germans made the tanks are the artillery pieces and this piece moves <laughs> see it elevates and this piece moves because he just like like for the recoil right so anyway i was thinking about making this up painting it up you know working on it there's like something splashed on this what the hell's going on here anyway and maybe not terrain bit but um you know i don't know something crazy uh talk to matt you know about doing like a scenario where you know, you have this big carrot. Yeah, what the hell's all over this? It's like even hair is stuck to this. Good grief. <laughs> I don't even know if I got it from Jim this way. Jim, if you drop this thing off and it had all sorts of ghibli gook, I'm going to get freaked right out. But anyway, yeah. So if anybody knows what this is, let me know in the comments below. I'm going to read it right now because by the time, by now you guys are seeing this thing. And I have no idea what this tank is called what, and what the kit is from. But anyway, he had made this. Okay. We'll leave this in the shot. Well, I'll try and leave this in the shot here so you guys can, you know, mull it over. But yeah, we're going to put this little barrel on it like that. Make it like a big siege gun, right? So we have this other bit where it's that he was in the process of making. And he took a Chimera uh, hull. I don't know. And he's got some other crazy little doodad here. But he, he's got... Um, big shells and like he's got like brass bits and stuff in here and 
Like, Jim went all out on this thing, and he's crazy. And you gotta love him for it. Because he's crazy. But anyway, where the hell would you tow this? Oh, crap. Anyway. And so, yeah, basically, that little guy is gonna tow it. And, you know, it's an Imperial Guard kind of thing. I think it would be great in a Death Corp of Krieg kind of uh, army. And it's almost the kind of thing that make me start a Death Corp army. Because you don't see a lot of them around, right? At least I don't. I don't know if you guys do, but I don't see a lot of them around. But, yeah, so, and all the, yeah, all this is is just a little Death Corp, or a Death Corp Chimera. And it's got these little shells, you know, so we can, we can put more shells on there, you know. Because I think they're the right bore size. Yeah, see, they're the right bore size. <laughs> so it makes sense that these shells are coming out of this gun, right? <laughs> either way it'd be really cool it, even just as a diorama piece i think with little imperial guard guys walking around on it and you know something like that but anyway oh crap i gotta fix that hold on folks hold on Ugh. and of course jim he gave me like a whole bunch of other kits in there like there's uh you might see a little bit of cardboard boxes on the side over there and those are the uh, Forge World um, Mal Malkador? Malkadors? Anyway. Anyway, let's get back to the comments here. <laughs> uh, so does anybody know what the hell that thing's called? Um, geez. Where am I in these comments? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just looking... Oh, Lancaster took off from Hamilton. Oh, okay. No, I didn't. I missed that. Um, da dum 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 dum. Shadow Hell 40k. Hey, Chris, perhaps you can help me. I'm trying to do a hot rod style flames. I'm a dark elder, venoms, and flyers, but I'm having issues finding a stencil for a good way to do them. Well, if you're doing them by airbrush, Shadow, uh, there are lots of flame stencils. And. It's, there's a lot of videos out there on doing like the hot rod kind of flames with the airbrush using those stencils, but basically it's just that curved, uh, shape, right? It often has like a big curve and a small curve and there's a few other little curves in there. But, um, if you're looking to do kind of that, that single flame kind of hot rod kind of shape, you might have to freehand it. I don't know if you're going to find a lot of stencil. I'm sure somebody out there has a stencil on it. Uh, another way to go about it is pick yourself up some frisket film, draw it out, or if you're not very, you know, uh, artistic like that, you can uh, photocopy or scan or print, like look on the internet for hot rod flames, find a vector graphic of it and print that out, take your frisket film, lay it on top of that, trace it out, cut it out, you've made your own stencil, slap it onto your model and frisket film nice and thin so you'll be able to work it like around corners and stuff like that and you spray it now of course if you're doing it um by hand well then you're just gonna have to freehand it and yeah uh we could do a video on it i think i've done videos on painting flames and i think i've done that similar kind of hot rod kind of flame uh sorry i'm just looking at my model collection here i'm trying to see which if that guy is in here or did he get uh reckon ordered to uh to the mini wargaming space marines i think he did i had a bunch of space marines in here and now i don't see them so anyway um yeah so hopefully shadow that kind of helps um but yeah that, like there's a few ways obviously if you're doing it by hand then you're just gonna have to freehand it and but you're you're talking about a stencil and so i'm gonna assume you're airbrushing it and yeah there's there's quite a few tutorials out there um I don't know if anybody's really done it on, on like wargaming models, but the practice still stands as far as uh, the, doing the flames with the airbrush, like for illustration. So you should be able to find something like that. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I think like an orc vehicle with like the big hot rod flames on it, I think would be a lot of fun. Something like that. But you're doing Dark Elder, so yeah, even Dark Elder. Especially if you did them like a Samhan bright red with gloss, and then you did the flames, like the hot rod. Like, just made them completely 1950s, 1960s kind of, you know, 
really crazy kind of hot rod kind of cars, I I think it would just be win. It'd be all win. <laughs> but yeah, so hopefully Shadow, uh, Shadow Hell 40K. Am I saying that right? Shadow Hell? Yeah, Shadow Hell 40K. Yeah. Sorry. My eyes are going on me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Eric's coin. I got my whirlwind and razor back today. A fine Saturday indeed. Graham Colin, good afternoon, chappies. <laughs> Tolo, Chris, do I know Jim? Was he a Bawattinger? Yeah, Jim. Jim. <laughs> Come on, Doughty. Everybody knows Doughty. Jeez. Mark Hill at David. Oh, I'm not going to read it. Clayton Tate! Yay, hooray, it's Saturday cartoons, Chris style. <laughs> they tell you, gosh, that looks like one of them German 240 millimeter rail guns. Yeah, that's what I thought. Like, it looked more like the carriage, and it was like for the rail cars, but then it's got tank treads. And I don't know if Jim just, you know, put two other kits together, or if, you know, that was the kit, and it was, you know. Knack... <laughs> Knack, knack chack jeez knack chack <laughs> both my grandfathers were the lancaster crew in world war ii one a pilot the other mechanic were they best of buds and that's how they both made it home at least i hope they made it home i don't know <laughs> oh excuse me shadow hell 40k it looks like a world war ii concept tank from the german side is it just a concept tank I don't know if it's a tank tank. Well, I guess because it's got tr treads, right? So it's a tank. But, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what, like... See, that's the thing. I mean, like... I'm, you know, familiar with a lot of the World War II stuff. But, I mean, like, you know, when you get into the late war, you know, and Germans were kind of throwing out all sorts of uh, crazy tech at the Allies, you know? Who knows? I, at first, I was kind of thinking, because, like, I didn't really think, like, a lot of... I, like, I know, you know, there was a few big guns that were made, and I don't know if that's a model kit of one of them famous big guns. I don't know. I don't know. That's why I'm asking you guys. I'm asking the intelligent folks, the intelligent monkeys, the wise monkeys, the wise, the wizen of the monkeys. Stephen Carroll, first chance to watch live. Well, hopefully you're enjoying yourself and hopefully the show hasn't been too hyped up for you that you're going, oh, this is crap. This is just Chris rambling on about crap. <laughs> Graham Collin, the Russians were into that kind of thing too. The gun probably comes from a battleship. Yeah. Ido Gihama, it's a Carl device. Okay, you'll have to elaborate on that, Ido. I'm not that familiar with the Carl device. I don't know. Uh, Dave Battaglia. Yes, it would be a great orc vehicle. Definitely an APOC vehicle with at least strength 10, 10 inch blast, 7 inch strength D. <laughs> it would be kind of fun, right? Because, I mean, the shells are just huge. And so, what is it, right? Edo, also known as Thor and Moser Carl. Germans built seven of those. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. You have to, uh, Ido, email me a link as far, like, like where I can scare up some info on that thing. Just to kind of get the background story on it and, like, you know, what parts, you know, were on it. And, yeah, feel free to email me that. But, uh, Dave Patelia, at Chris, thus that super large tank shoots confetti out the barrel. The Germans are going to use it to celebrate their victory in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if that really was the intention? We only built these big guns so that when we win the water, we shoot. <laughs> That's a terrible German accent. <laughs> uh, the, the guitar noob reminds me of the Manusa Imperial Cannon. Yeah, that's kind of what it reminds me of, right? Spetz Z9P. Whoa, Spetz. We're just going to say you're Spetz. <laughs> awesome. Uh, headshots, I'd make that thing all orky. You probably would. 
let's get to holy man all these comments are jumping in at me i don't know what the heck is going on here um so we are going to jump into an email this is from kevin surge Hey Chris, I have a quick tip question. What's the difference in how you shade highlight non-organic metal and armor versus organic material, cloth and flesh? Kevin, what is the difference in how you shade and highlight? Well, most of the time there really is not that much difference, especially on small models. Like for example, when you're you know, you know you're painting a model and i think it was i was having this discussion with steve yesterday like painting a face because he was dry he dry brushes the face and i was telling him like you know well, you might be a little bit more comfortable just layering those highlights onto the face because it's a the face has kind of been broken down into just basically amorphic shapes that are on it and you just simply paint those shapes and you've highlighted a face it's really kind of it's been really broken down and you might be running into that kind of situation where you might be overthinking the difference between shading and highlighting inorganic material and organic material because it all depends on on what you're creating. For example, like you can paint flesh with metallics. And, you know, and that would perfectly that would make sense because for example, like I did uh, videos in the vault on painting demon flesh, and I painted a corn berser- uh, not berserker, blood letter, uh, in gold and reds, blending together, and you know, it was a metal I used to paint flesh, and so it really you know don't get caught up in what a material is, other than what you want to look like. So when you're painting like a Space Marine's armor and you've painted it to look like flesh, that works too. Uh, you can paint it to look like muscles. I've you, Back in the day, there was a few White Dwarf articles and they'd shown like um, Space Marines and Chaos Warriors and things like that where the, the matte armor looked like the muscle sinew. And it looked great. It looked awesome. Like why... Why wouldn't why wouldn't you do all your space screens like that? Other than taking a bazillion hours to get it all painted and created. Oh, my troops are ready in Clash of Clans. <laughs> and you know, so like when you're getting hung up on inorganic and organic materials like that, I I think you might be overthinking things. Because really how you paint something determines in what it is, right? It's so a space means armor painting it to look, you know, solid blue, hard edges, right? You can paint it to look like solid armor. You could paint it to look like pulled flesh or cowhide or, you know what I mean? And simply by just the brush strokes, you can make it look like it was, you know, it's a different surface. That's the beauty of painting is that you can do whatever you want and the, and whatever, however you uh, create those effects tells the observer's eyes that it is that texture or it is that color scheme or it is you know and so really you know you're limiting yourself by trying to by getting hung up on organic and inorganic materials because why not combine the two why not mix them and you open yourself up to a whole world of possibilities you know just an idea just to kind of you know free your mind of i think this kind of limitation uh, and you know i'm not saying that you know it's a small mindedness thing or anything like that it's just oftentimes when we're at certain levels you know we we, we get it we get kind of caught up in these concepts and again it's it's kind of like the um the you know getting caught up in technique like you know i get i get really pissed off when people you know call dry brushing a noob technique there is no noob techniques. There is no noobish technique, right? When people talk about glazing, you know, when you're you're laying layer upon layer uh, of color on top of another, and it's an expert technique, or airbrushing is expert. Like, 
No, it's just a technique. It's just another tool to get an effect in what you want. Some te some techniques will get you there quicker, and some techniques will get you there will are easier to pull off. And you know, like dry brushing. Dry brushing is one of the first techniques that a lot of people learn when they're painting, but it is one of the hardest to master. Same with layering. Layering your te your highlights, right? Because layering, you're you're building your colors up. It's a very straightforward kind of way. And so is that a noobish technique? Because essentially when you get into glazing, when you're, when you're breaking that, those paints down so they're very thin and uh, very translucent, you're essentially just lay, layering the paint on. That's still a very noobish technique, right? And so it's, it's just that whole kind of... Don't get caught up in, in the techniques or too heavily in the concepts keep your mind open to you know the other possibilities and really it's how am i going to achieve that particular effect and when you're concerning yourself with highlighting you know um metal and armor think more straight kind of highlights smooth color transitions things of that sharp edges to the highlights right versus non-organic uh, or material, fur and things like that, where you, your brush stroke can be quite um, sketchy so that you have these sharp little you know points, right? And that indicates kind of fur, especially if it's a smooth surface, but you want to have that, that texture occurring, right? Flesh. Flesh is another one. And again, it's all just, uh, it's all dependent on what you're comfortable with and... Yeah, we can go on for hours on, <laughs> on on just not limiting yourself conceptually as to what you're trying to create. And, you know, orcs are a great army for, you know, just kind of having at it. Chaos is another fun one because chaos, because, you know, the concept of chaos that you know the space marines are in the warp and their armor is warping and it's changing and you know they're changing inside and all these crazy kind of things that you can do whatever right you can do whatever like there's no reason why a got why a man's flesh couldn't be irradiating gold you know what i mean like just gold coming out of it or it couldn't be, look like it was painted like clear stone like jade or you know things like that like just kind of whacked out kind of concepts it's really really fun yeah we get kind of uh um, peg hold, you know, um, when we're painting like space marines, and th again, you know, like they are very limiting, especially when you follow particular kind of codexes, like you know, blood angels, right? When you're painting blood angels, paint them red, paint them dark red, paint them bright red, you know, but otherwise, paint them red. When you're ready to make up your own chapter, well, then you can make up your own and go completely wild with whatever but yeah so hopefully uh kevin that answers helps hopefully it helps at the very least i hope it hope i hope it helped but yeah because it, it's more it that sounds more conceptual and that sounds more like you're getting hung up on you know because like I was like, you know, like I was talking with Steve, he was dry brushing the flesh and dry brushing tends to leave a bit of a chalkiness, uh, especially if the base layers are too heavy or there's too uh, many brush strokes or what have you. Right. And so you end up with a slight chalkiness. Now, it, a lot of times that can work even on flesh and dry brushing as a technique. Well, you pretty much dry brush fur, you have dry brush in the metal, you can dry brush the flesh. You can use that same technique across them all to achieve your desired effect. There really wasn't any difference other than color choices. Being flesh colors, being metal colors, being, you know, uh, fur colors. And you know what I mean? Like, it's it's all up here. It's all up here. And just kind of free your mind in that regards. That, you know, technique and how something is painted are not the same thing. It, it, it's there is set patterns for how you paint armor how you paint flesh how you paint fur there are sets kind of standards for doing it 
but don't limit yourself to those because the technique and once you build up a, a larger repertoire of technique you know you you know more possibilities and the barriers in which you thought were there kind of just fall down and you realize that it, it was more like rice paper in the way and you know it w just wasn't necessary so um yeah again i hope that helps and if it doesn't well too bad <laughs> let's get back to the comments here um i don't know what the heck is going on here everybody's talking all sorts of stuff everybody's talking all sorts of stuff oh i think because well we're talking about the clash of clans stuff yeah <laughs> Stupid Clash of Clans, I know. Mark Hill, it's a World War II German heavy tank Carl Thor, a 605mm artillery gun. Okay. Graham Collin, I think that post-World War I, a tank is officially defined as being, by having a turret. Tracks rather than wheels are obvious. Things like Stug's Jagd Panthers. I don't know. I don't know how you properly say that one. And such didn't have turrets, and as such weren't classed as tanks, but as self-propelled guns. Yes, okay. Yeah. See? <laughs> there we go. See, that's why I asked. Oh, Aaron Seach. Is Aaron Seach? Yeah. Okay, well, thanks, Graham. And thanks, Mark. And thank you, Ido, for your input and enlightening me on that tank so it begs the question now how do we incorporate that into an imperial guard army do we make it you know a scenario piece or do we actually try and make it playable i think a scenario piece would be better it'd be a little bit more exciting right it kind of a uh, uh, make a mission kind of like guns of the Navarone kind of thing, right? Where you have this Imperial Guard encampment and this big field gun and it's, you know, it's destroying, you know, entire columns of tanks and it's up to, you know, a little band of, you know, orky commandos to take the gun out or take it over, one of the two. Something like that, right? It's a fun little scenario. I don't know. Just just spitballing here. Just spitballing, people. Just spitballing. <laughs> brain power, brain power. <laughs> let's get to another email because you know what i'm way behind on emails and oh yeah i'm gonna run something else past you guys but let's let's talk about it after the email arturo patet dear chris i'm sorry i haven't been around the, the show last weeks but i've been under a lot of pressure at home you know soccer world cup on tv playing d-o-t-a on the afternoon waking up late eating breathing busy weekends <laughs> Yeah, hey, I mean, don't apologize if you ain't here, man. You know, I realize a lot of you guys have lives, you know, and some of you are just free at this moment when you're here, and some of you aren't. Either way, life takes precedence, and please don't apologize for life. Now, to business. The first pictures I've sent are... A progress on a little death dread I made out of plastic card, glue, and paint. There's some other stuff, but mostly just that. There's a bit of painting on a big uh, orc, big mech conversion of the Assault on Blackreach war boss, and a little sculpted commissar. The last picture of me regular work is the Turtle Man. The Turtle Man. As my wife called the little Ba. Rod. Whoa. Ba. -a. The little B A R D. I don't know. Oh, bastard? maybe that almost got me three months to finish i know it's not painted and do not have any riblet ribbits but i or regrets maybe <laughs> wow but i do not know if i had the strength to make those finally two weeks ago before i send this email you talked about the few female figures that eldar had on their armies which does which goes against fluff. And you make a wish. I, I make the wish. I make the wish. I wish I had someone made a female Eldar. Oh, the Avatar. Yeah, when I was talking about the Avatar. Female Avatar. That'd be awesome. So I got a little epoxy putty, a little knife, and started working as usual on the job without the boss knowing. <laughs> 
I need to paint the figure, but it's start on painting a little kid wishes come true <laughs> by little kid. I mean, a giant hair dude that paints minis for a living. <laughs> it always comes back to that, right? There's some guy getting paid to paint miniatures for a living. <laughs> PD, if any of this doesn't make sense, remember, English is not my first language language age. <laughs> so be patient. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not laughing at you, Arturo. It's just, it's, it's fun. A PD2. I know the pictures are bad. I can't find my camera anywhere. So the pictures were made with my wife's cell phone. Cheers. And so let's have a look. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Look at this thing. This is cool. <laughs> and he completely made that. <laughs> That's, oh, wait, I got to fix the screen here sorry you guys weren't getting the whole picture here i'm sorry here we go look at that bask in the creativity of arturo and you know i oops crap let's go to the next one here i dig when people you know take it upon themselves to create something emulate and what have you especially when you know when you don't really have the funds to really kind of you know enjoy the, the the fine sculpture but coming up with something on your own and making you know this kind of stuff i think is just fantastic <laughs> and especially when they're painted well too that's the other part i can appreciate that it's and of course it's orc right so i mean you know even if it was a slapdash kind of paint job it still looks really good for orcs oh look at that that almost looks like he's got some OSL going on there. Hey, that's pretty darn good. Oh, I like the orbs. Oh, I like this. This is really good. I dig it, dude. <laughs> hey, it's kind of hard to tell if he's got a 5 o'clock shadow or not. Man. Whoa! Holy crap. Look at this. Are you guys looking at this? I'll bet you're not even looking at this, because... Dude. Look at this. This is impressive as hell! My hat's off to you, sir. I kind of like how you got it, like the mix of kind of both aesthetics. Because it's kind of old school... Yet it's kind of new school. Like the feet design. Well, I mean, like this is still kind of old, but like here and here, it feels more like the new one. And the shoulder pads are feel like they're old, like the old school, but like he's got the newer type, you know, double weapon. Well, I guess that's the older one too. That's impressive, dude. Holy moly. You're a sculpting machine. very very cool look at this arturo you're quite the quite the guy <laughs> she's got high heels on sexy <laughs> very cool look at this like you're a madman a madman arturo you are a madman but oh you're here today arturo i didn't even realize you were here today I, maybe I didn't call your name up, but anyway, awesome work, great job, and that female avatar is really, really cool. That's very, very cool. I dig it. I like it. It's very Eldar-ish. Like, it's obviously Eldar, right? But very, very cool. I, I am, I am in awe of your sculpting <laughs> I'm, I'm in the awe of the sculpting because I can't sculpt I mean like I do like little things like when I'm doing conversions and things like that but I don't sculpt I, you know just don't you know it's not one of my strong suits terrain building scratch building stuff like that you know like taking established pieces and kind of slapping them together you know easy enough right 
little bit of green stuff here and there, smooth it out, you know, maybe make a little shape, maybe sculpt a little uh, pouch or, you know, something like that, belt buckle, whatever. <sighs> but like a full-on sculpture, I have not tried since my college days. And, yeah. Like, it's something, you know, because, like, I'd like to, like, okay. I hear noise. Anyway. I'd like to make, you know, like a full-on suit. And, you know, the whole cosplay thing, I've, I've kind of had a, a small amount of interest in. Especially in the regards to, um, you know, Space Marines. Making a Space Marine suit. That'd just be fun as hell. But, yeah. As far as, like, sculpture... I mean, cats like Arturo here, you know, like if I tried that, I, I don't even know what you guys would get. I should do it just so you guys could have a laugh at what I made. You know, I should try and sculpt like a space Marine or something like that. Something or just a, a, a figure like in the 28 millimeter. Cause it's, it's not just sculpting. Cause I mean like making a sculpture this big, it's really not a huge issue because you have, because your canvas size is quite large. But when you sculpting at you know the twenty eight millimeter type scale, that's that takes some cojones, and you know like I said Arturo like that's that's fantastic dude, and yeah the Def Dread, awesome work, you know, just awesome, awesome I you know, just awesome, good job, keep going, keep doing what you're doing dude, cause you know, it's madness, <laughs> and the Titan that Titan was as crazy as 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 I don't even want to say it because I'll have to change the age rating on the show <laughs> so uh, I'm just look, kind of looking at the comments here and it looks like Arturo is filling in everybody on what he was doing and um, yeah I don't know I just that was impressive I think all we can do is jump to another email because, like I said, I'm way behind. And, of course, I've got a great big one here from Giancarlo Pignati. Pignati? Was it Pignati? Pignati? Pigati? Pagati? Pigati? Oh, I know he's going to yell at me again, but anyway. <laughs> well, just, you know, just give me your online handle. But even the online handles are crazy, too. they got numbers and crap and letters backwards. And I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Cyrillics and stuff. <laughs> you know, the characters like in the calculator you never use. <laughs> anyway. Hey, Chris. I've been busy with work and stuff as of late, and I haven't been able to attend the past few Way the Brush Live shows. I've been keeping up on them during the week, though. I actually just finished watching episode 48, and I figured I'd just write to say that the show is awesome and that I really appreciate all the videos you release in the vault. Well, thank you. In one of the latest episodes, you mentioned how you were, shall we say, lacking a bit of motivation. Since you've been releasing the same sort of quick tip videos for so long, I get where you're coming from. And hopefully you can follow through with your idea of trying out other kind of videos. That being said, I hope you do realize that the sort of videos you have produced can be very inspirational for some of us. Well, I hope so. I've always considered myself to be a very clumsy to be very clumsy when it comes to very fine detail work, such as miniature painting. But your videos made me want to give it a try, and I don't think I've been half bad at it. Sorry, i got to scroll the paragraph. <laughs> Gene, Giancarlo is uh, giving me his life story here. <laughs> Johnny Wraith, that's, it, that's his handle, Johnny Wraith. <laughs> right. Anyway. <laughs> I wish I could send you some pics of the work i've done but really i've been painting those generic green army soldiers in order to practice you know what though that that's actually not a bad idea to practice on things like that i've been working on being mindful of brush strokes keeping things clean getting a feel of how the brush moves and all the and all that good stuff i've got a chaos army but i really want to get to a point where I'm comfortable with painting before I take a stab at them. That being said, I've got like a sea of gray models right now staring at me and I think one of these days I'll give in and try to paint one. <laughs> yeah, just do it, man. 
Don't be scared. No fear. No fear. So yeah, work is work, and you're anything. Well, and if you're anything like me, it'll always feel like a bit bleh because it's routine, and you gotta have to do it. Yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of what it is. It's it's like I gotta get it done. I gotta get it done. Oh, I've done it a million times. Gotta get it done. <laughs> do know though that the work you do is reaching out to people half across the world. Halfway across the world, maybe? I don't know. And encouraging them to try out new things and perhaps not feel too shitty about themselves. Sincerely, Johnny Wraith. <laughs> He's got a little PS there at the bottom. <laughs> Quit your wife, you big pussy. <laughs> ah, kidding. Ah, Johnny Wraith. He's smart. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> so... It's always nice, like I said, get emails from everybody, even just say hello and what have you, you know. I do like hearing, you know, uh, if a particular video that I've made has helped you in some small way or, you know, inspired something or, you know, pushed you in a direction, anything, really. It's, uh, it does, it, believe it or not, it does help keep me motivated to keep creating stuff, believe it or not. Um, you know, I think like any, like any and all artists, you kind of thrive on the feedback and, you know, it's this whole kind of symbiosis with, you know, the creator and the observer and, you know, it, it's that, it's that whole kind of, uh, reciprocation kind of vibe, you know, I, I, I do appreciate when people do send me just saying, you know, like, Hey Chris, that quick tip you made. It was great help, you know, and it's motiv it's helped motivate me to get my models done. That's what I like here. I, and I see that a lot in the vault. And, you know, keep going, guys, for any of you guys who are vault members, you know. And for any of you guys who are not vault members, um, if you've never tried it out, it's... I've got a whack ton of videos there. It's got to be like three... It's got to be like over 300 videos on painting on many subjects. Yeah, you can go to YouTube and type it in, but oftentimes, you know, it's it, the, the quality isn't there, and you know what I've created in the vault is of the best quality. Even some of like some of the stuff I've noticed the way Games Workshop, the way they do their videos, um, it, it it looks a little familiar. <laughs> it looks a little familiar, so. I don't know. I, it, it, it would be a huge compliment if they say, well, because Chris's painting videos kind of inspired us to how we shoot ours. and But that will never happen. <laughs> but that's okay. It, you know, because I've been inspired for so many years by what they were creating that, you know, it's all, it's, all, it's a circle of life, Simba. It's a circle of life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's coffee break time. What time are we at? Holy crap. It's almost one o'clock. Well, one o'clock for me. I don't know what time it is for you guys, but uh, Steve Cox is anyone doing Dungeon Saga KS? What's Dungeon Saga KS? Is that Kickstarter? KS? I don't know. Holy man! <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading some of the comments here. I'm just kind of I'm I'm I always get lost in the comments. It's not that I'm ignoring you people. I can see Dr. Xantos has joined us, and I can see Best Jill Bear 666. You know those are lucky numbers, by the way? <laughs> I don't I don't even know. It's uh, some of the religious folk are out there like, Oh, it's the mark of the beast. No, oh, it's evil. Evil. <laughs> let's, let's jump to an email before I, I don't know say something completely stupid <laughs> before I end up putting my foot in my mouth or something like that let's go to Rex Major I think that's his handle I don't know that's his name Rex anyway at Chris he sends me an email but you start it with at Chris like it was in the middle of a chat <laughs> or maybe it was and just the way he was maybe he was on a phone when he was doing it <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> at Chris, so I'm going to be starting Space World Company once the new codex comes out, and I want to paint them with the red-gray screen. 
Very cool. I like that scheme. Well, the red with the red gray scheme, like the gray, uh, the gray hunters. Is that what he means? I don't know. My question is about painting the armor gray. I have seen a lot of videos that paint the armor full gray or the the full armor gray, then wash the whole model with non oil, then edge highlight with the same gray that was used. I have tried this, but it always seems to get oil marks on that flat parts of the armor and then I highlight using the same gray color it doesn't really pop out could you give me some tips on doing this scheme using a different technique or how to do or how to I how to I could could improve my oil wash technique to not get the marks and also if I could use the same gray color or use something more like white to make it stand out. Sorry for the length of the question. Colon, end bracket. Thanks. <laughs> Colon, end bracket. What the hell does that mean? So, okay. <laughs> if, I, if I was getting the gist of the, of, of the question, which is he's, ha he's having a bit of problems when he's applying non-oil over the entire model. Now, anybody who's been watching the videos... That I, you know, that I make. Uh, oftentimes, I'm not a huge fan of, you know, laying those shades down over the entire area, unless, of course, it is your intention to bring the entire color down. But then it's you got to be in very controlled fashion, and with those shades, you have to be very quick when you are just tinting the surface. Now, if you want it to pool up in areas and create heavy shadows. Uh, it does a good job at that most of the time, but you can run kind of run into some funny areas, especially when the um, especially with non oil and what was the, there's another color where you get this little frosting occurring when it when the shade is too heavy. But anyway, <sighs> if you're looking to shade your space holes or space marines in general, and you're using that non oil or whatever shade color you're using, <sighs> you might be better off taking the detail brush and deliberately applying it you know like um uh, like on the inner thigh of a space marine how he has some of those little techno doodads or like little grill marks that looks like a little vent holes or anything like that and taking that shade and just applying it into the lines and allowing that ink to do what it does best which is fall within a recess and dry and create a heavy amount of color in those areas that's what that shade is best at because it's a very low viscosity and it'll sit right in those details and you know it's very minimal tinting around uh the edges so for example um like for example the uh the, the space marine's helmet right and you have that eye and then that line that runs down the helmet so for example you base color the model in that typical space wolf gray color which is now what the fang i think it's called it's a really kind of blue gray great color to use for space world because you know that's how we see in the books right and taking non-oil and just deliberately applying it into the lines not heavily just enough to tint and if it's not t if it's not dark enough then once it's dry you can go in and create another line and just deepen it up as you want it does take a bit more time but if you're shading the entire model and then having to re kind of reestablish the base color, like by applying layers of the base color again, either way, you know, you're taking time. It's, it's taking time to achieve the look you want. Right. And so I think you might be better off using your detail brush and taking amounts of the shade, that shade wash, non oil and applying it into just the recesses that you want shaded. <coughs> you're being very deliberate with it, but that's good. That's good to be very deliberate with it. Otherwise, you know, you're shading the entire surface and you're changing the t overall value of the, of the color. And so if that's what you want and you were say dry brushing your color back up, which is, which is a fine way of doing that, you create this gradient and you're kind of going for a more of a, um, uh, uh, low key look. Yeah. So you have these really high contrasts. Or is it high key? It's low key. <laughs> I always get the, the... Anyway. Where you have really deep shadows and really bright highlights. And you can create that kind of look. And it really, if... It's really what you're comfortable with. And if you've got your detail brush, 
I would de definitely recommend just picking those little details out with just a little bit of shade. Now, I'm not talking about a heavy load on the brush. I'm talking, you know, just enough to dampen the bristles that you can see that the color is there, but not so much that the bristles are splayed. That's like a heavy load, right? When there's when the, when the bristles are all splayed out and then you can see like it looks like it's about to drip, that's too much on the brush. Just enough to, to you can see it's in the bristles and then apply it to those little details. Not too heavily, just enough so that it, it gathers in those lot re lines and things like that. And then when you take your edge color or your base color and reestablish the edges of those things and then take a lighter color and then just kind of build your highlights up around that. If that's the way you want to go, if you want to go for that kind of games workshop kind of look, that's typically how you'd go about it. Typically. I don't know. I got space wolf. I got pictures of space wolf right here. Hold on. Got a whole bunch of transfers here from Steve. Anyway. Yeah. Because I got the new white dwarf right here. And yeah. You can see it's very deliberate. So really most of your time is spent on shading Let's see if we have a bigger picture of some space marines here <laughs> all this time on the internet and chris is looking at white dwarf again <laughs> i thought there was a painting guide in this episode in this episode yeah yeah that's right anyway yeah yeah i mean I I can't find any good pictures. Anyway, you know, like with the space holes, right? You get the armor, and it's really the trick is getting getting that smooth base color down. And you can use black, but I find that the color, well, either way, because it's a mid-tone, you know, if it sits on black or sits on white, it's really up to you what you prime in, but you got to lay that, it's the trick is getting that base color down nice and smooth because really the way games workshop uh highlights models is a strong base color and then everything's edge highlighted there might be some slight dry brushing just to bring a bit of texture in and the shade wash is very deliberate it's not applied over the entire surface because you can see like for example on for anybody who's got th this book handy you can see on this guy's foot Sorry, there's a glare here. You can see on this guy's foot, you can see the shade, the shadows are very deliberate. And in fact, it almost looks like just like black lining. Yeah, it's very deliberate. That's not accidental. Like, like maybe the fur on the, the, the wolves is a big wash. But like even his shield, the transition on his shield, it doesn't look like they use the shade wash it looks like they took like a bit of non oil with the gray thinned it down and glazed it and brought that transition in there that's what that looks like to me anyway because then it's black lined around with the gold and the gray <laughs> you know oh right um yeah anyway so hopefully that helps rex um just use your detail brush, non-oil, and just lay it into the cracks and the crevices. And really, if you're looking to emulate Games Workshop style of painting, yeah, that's all it is. It's The trick is getting that smooth base color down. And that's it. Because the rest is just edge highlighting. It's just applying that shade. And really, when you start getting into display quality stuff where you get these really great transitions going on, that requires more effort anyway. And if you're just getting these guys to tabletop standard, but to want them to look to really good tabletop standard, then yeah. Because like Games Workshop, like what you see in the white doors, that's that's a high tabletop. That's not display though. Because like, you know, there's not a lot of uh, color transitions you know, especially on like golds and stuff like that. The golds always, the way they do golds, like whatever the painters are doing, it's, it seems really, really quick. But I'm sure that their painters are under like really strict deadlines for getting stuff done. So they don't spend a lot of time because really, really good paint jobs are all about time and the amount of time spent into the model. And that's the only difference between 
really great models and mediocre models is the amount of time that was spent. Yeah, and skill, of course, but it's always time. That's anybody who's ever won competitions, that's the number one advice that always comes out of them. Time. The amount of time you spent. Some competition pieces, you know, just literally model like that, and they spent, you know, 100 hours painting. That's a lot of time to spend painting on a model. But to get that really great color transitions and, you know, detail and, you know, what have you, it's time. It's always time. There is no shortcuts to fantastic looking models. Some people would say airbrushing, but that only gets you part of the way. Part of the way. And even if you're not doing your airbrushing right, if you're not got the wrong pressures, you're not, paints aren't thin enough, or you're not using colors well, or what have you, you will you will see that it's airbrushed. And, you know. Arturo Patek. Chris, my wife just entered the room and says that she envy our hair. Or maybe your hair. My hair? <laughs> she envies my hair. Well, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I know I get that a lot A lot of women get annoyed Because Poor old Chris has thick, dark, long hair It's our girls, can't help it You know, it's just the way I was made Just the jeans, man, just the jeans uh, Tolo Cat Poop Coffee official name is Kopi Luwak I have no idea what the hell that means what the hell did you just write there? <laughs> oh, yeah. So anyway, before I was, I was getting to an email, I had an idea. And let me know what you guys think of this idea. Because <clears throat> I was hit with the other day. Because you know how like, I wanted to ha incorporate Skype into this program? And, you know, it just wasn't quite working out because of the live stream and everything like that. And so I was thinking of doing a pre-recorded kind of way of the brush type show where I'm going to, you know, and we're going to do, do just strictly Skype. And yeah, so I was thinking that that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do an off. It won't be live. But it'll be pre-recorded, and po probably so that I can edit and stuff like that as well. Just in case anybody's dropping too many F-bombs or, you know, something like that, right? But anyway, but Skype calls. And, you know, basically we'll talk. Five, ten minutes, you know, quick, hi, how do you do, you know, show me what you're working on, question, you know, answer, and on to the next video. So I think I'm going to do something like that. It'll be probably like way of the brush, you know, <laughs> I, I, the first words that came to mind was intimate and interactive, but that kind of has, you know, the wrong kind of, I think, vibe and <laughs> and you know how much I enjoy innuendo, but I think I'll call it something more simple, like, you know, conversations or, you know, something like that. I don't know. But anyway, let me know what you guys think of that, because like a lot of you guys already have me on Skype. And so I'll probably call, uh, I might actually start filming it. Maybe today I'll film it, you know, and record Skype conversations. And I might either do them in as one show or I might just release them as episodic kind of, you know, conversation, each conversation as a video, you know, as we kind of talk. And I think it'd be a lot of fun because it'd be a lot of fun for a lot of you guys to kind of, you know, you know, see what you're about. Because, you know, like a lot of you guys, you know, I'm sure are a barrel of monkeys, you know, and it, when we're all kind of chatting here in the comments you know, you don't get the personality. I mean, you kind of do. But I mean, like, like whenever Dave Battaglia writes something, I, I've met Dave. I've had many conversations with the guy. And so when he writes things, I hear his voice as he's saying it. And, you know, I kind of get, you know, what he's getting at. And, you know, that's all. That's all I'm getting at, I guess. I don't know. Well, let me go. Let me go. Let me know what you guys think, if that's a good idea, you know. The monkey cam. <laughs> way of the Skype. Yeah, way of the Skype, you know? <laughs> yeah. Will there be two way of the brush then? There might be more than 
to weigh the brushes because I mean like I always like having extra content for my channel and you know if I released you know like an episode of weigh the brush conversations you know like halfway through the week where we're kind of talking about you know painting stuff it, it'll be it'll be like this but I'll be talking with an individual and answering their question and you know because sometimes you know I'm not sure if because sometimes you guys can write an email and as as eloquent as some of you are <laughs> and it just doesn't convey exactly what it is that's troubling you versus having a conversation where you can say well Chris when I'm looking at this model right here this little space is just kind of pissing me off then you know what I mean like we can get into that kind of that kind of uh, that help like that so I was thinking that that would be kind of a fun fun thing to do and I'm you know nothing too long I don't want to take like an hour long show about you know listening to Dave talk about you know, um, you know what, what kind of groceries he picked up that day like I don't I don't want I'm not interested in that kind of show <laughs> I don't know how many of you guys are but I, I know I sure shoot don't want it to be that kind of show I'd rather it be interesting informative and entertaining mostly in that order <laughs> oh man <laughs> Dave would tell you I'm much funnier in text than in person <laughs> yeah because you get time to think about your response right it's it's not quips man it's slopes <laughs> let's uh let's jump to another email because like I said we are so far behind on these emails oh wait crap did I do that one no here we go I think I jeez it's gonna be another long one here kids it's gonna be a long one strap yourselves in kids <laughs> this is from Dreddy or I don't even know what the heck the handle is anyway <laughs> hi Chris Tia from Germany here Gloom Dreddy on Mini Wargaming and Two Buttons Are Enough on YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> I have watched all your Way of the Brush shows so far. Oh, you poor thing. Sadly, only the recordings though, because for some reason, Germans are not allowed to watch streams on YouTube. Really? 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 Germans are not allowed to watch the live streams? Really? Why would that be? That doesn't make any sense. If anybody knows why, let me type, type it in the comments because I really, I really want to know why. Why, why is that? Because I know some videos I've, I've put out, I've seen that they were blocked in Germany. And I was like, why the heck are they blocked in Germany? Is there something, what's going on in Germany? Anyway, where am I? <laughs> of cause there are ways, but when I use those, the stream is almost unwatchably laggy. Ah. But anyway, love your show and your work, and I found it really interesting to see you progress from just some guy with the cool Eldar Titan in an APOC video to the painting chief monkey you are today. <laughs> painting chief or chef. No, chief. <laughs> I've been wanting to send you an email with some of my work for a while, but somehow I never got around to it. <laughs> Funny how that happens. <laughs> Today, I have a lot of time because I am sick and started watching your Way of the Brush episode 49 while I paint my Britannian starter army for relics. Super sweet game someone should play. Army for relics. Hmm. Interesting. And this is why I write to you today, good sir. I just painted some Puppet Trooper Mini for a contest for gaming. Contest for gaming. Tor Gaming is, ha oh, Tor Gaming, <laughs> or T-O-R, is having on their Facebook group. Went for a rough, cartoony look on them, because I think it's what suits them best. I also stole some ideas from an original paint job of the little guys, <laughs> like, uh oh I'm getting attacked. No, I'm just kidding. Clash of Clans, interrupting me, calling me, wants me to play. <laughs> I was, okay, so I also stole some ideas from the original paint job of the of the little guys, like the accent lines on the hats and the kind of pseudo fabric texture on their well fabric parts. 
<laughs> but I am not completely happy, mostly because I've been painting for about 18 years now and feel like I am stuck. Like I can't go into more detail and painting quality than this. Like my brain and fingers refuse. Hmm. Interesting. I I get different kind of exercise. Might be, you know, I don't know. But anyway, I know that I have a tendency to get impatient, though, which makes me rush through my paint jobs. This is okay for getting tabletop standard stuff done, which is most of my regular models. I only put more effort into characters and such. Yeah, it's good practice to be. But I also have, but it also happens to me when I try to go really go all out on a model I really love. Yeah, that can happen too. I mean, you kind of get overexcited and you really want to, you know, do a fantastic job. But again, it kind of falls into that category of time. You got to take a lot of time to do it. Like my brain is getting bored with the mini after several hours and just wants to get it over with. That happens too. <laughs> Taking breaks only helps a bit. When I get back, even after a day or two, I just want to finish the mini as soon as possible. Yeah, that's a little bit of self-control there too, though. I found, though, that I'm actually better on high-quality paint jobs I get paid for. I really take my time there, but also get really pissed at the models at some point and just want to get them off my table. <laughs> Maybe I just hate painting. Who knows? But then, why am I doing it all the time? <laughs> Any ideas, tips, hints for getting more patient with my models? Anyway, I attached some pictures of my Relic Britannian Troopers, and I also have some of my commission works, a Chaos Lord. Have a wonderful day, and lift more random people, colon D, colon capital D. Greetings from Germany, Tia. So, let's have a look at the models, and these are really really cool <laughs> they, they look like those guys from that playstation game the little sock puppet duders thingies you know what i'm talking about if you don't well then shut up no <laughs> i like them really nice nice flat even colors i like the texture on the uh, little cloth parts on them the little fabricy bits oh you did that okay uh, 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 right. That's not on them. Okay, so no, hold on now. I gotta go back now. Oh, very, very good. I like that. Very nice. Very cool. You also might want to, uh, just as a bit of a suggestion, uh, varnish your models, like in a mat or something like that. As you can kind of see how you have some like glossy points from the shade wash and sometimes you end up with this glossy kind of matte appearance and you know that'll just even out the surface matte especially for fabric stuff like this you know it's probably a good way to finish the model <laughs> very cool they're so wretchedly adorable Ooh, look at this Holy crap. Can I move this? I thought I had this screen set up right. Is this it? No. Crap. There we go. Screw it. Screw it. But very, very nice. I really dig that sword. I like the overall color scheme of it all. I like that. I love I love that cool, cool night blue. That purpley blue. Is that that old Games Workshop color? Because I know they don't make this this blue purple anymore, but really really nice. I like the contrast in the bone. I love just that orange bits all over the place. Gun, sword, his cloth, his symbol. It really draws your eye to the important bits, the little icons in his chest, his eyes. And it's a really nice color scheme too. And I like how you've kept to your color scheme, without you know getting you know too silly with other colors you know like you could have went with a different color on the fur but instead you stayed with a fairly neutral kind of gray which you know is better than going in with say a harsh brown or something like that and the brown works okay in there because you know it is a warmer color and it works with the orange 
Now, it looks like orange. I don't know if it is orange. I don't know if it went all the way to a red, but I will assume so. But at any rate, excellent work. I really dig it. I like it. That Chaos Marine is really, really cool. And those little sock puppet soldiers or whatever they are, I don't know what they're called. You, I think you told me, but I wasn't listening. <laughs> Very typical, I know. But anyway... <laughs> Some people are probably out there going, um, yeah, that's 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 Chris. He does that all the time. He says he's listening, but he's not listening. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait. Where am I in my emails? Sorry, I'm trying to get my email, my next emails organized up here. And yeah. So quickly back to the comments. Where are we? Mark Hill at Chris. The blocking of YouTube videos in Germany is part of an ongoing dispute between the video sharing platform YouTube and or GEMA, a performance rights organization in Germany. Oh. I wonder if it also has to do with like the copyright laws and stuff like that in Germany. Because doesn't Germany or maybe it's, no, maybe it's another company or country, I should say. Because I know some, there's a few countries that have funny copyright laws. Uh, the G-E-M-A or GEMA <laughs> um, Best Joe Bear just pulled that up interesting Stitch Punk that was spot on <laughs> uh, Joaquin Ortega Little Big Planet that's it that's the game yeah that's the game Little Big Planet the little sock guys, and he's got the big smiley face, and he's, oh, and he's jumping around and stuff. I don't own a PlayStation 4, so I've never played the game, because um, more of an Xbox kind of guy. Although I haven't picked up the Xbox One, uh, mainly because I've been trying to motivate uh, my two youngins to uh, play less video games, and so it really wouldn't make sense if Daddy bought himself a brand new Xbox and then sat in front of it all day long. And of course, um, I would, because I'm a big I'm a big nut for Battlefield. I love the Battlefield games. I just love the the chaos and, you know, the freedom of kind of just running around and blowing people up and setting traps or sniping people out or, you know, driving tanks, airplanes, helicopters. And, you know, when I used to play it on the PC, I used to be really good with the helicopter. Get you really fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Time we are here. Holy man, it's one, two, three, one twenty-three. Time for coffee break. Just a little spot of coffee. Just a spot. A yeah, just a spot. I thought I'd turn this thing down. Sorry, I'm playing with my iPad. I'm gonna play Clash of Clans while I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm not. Ah, uh, maybe I am. Let's jump to another email because well, I'm actually kind of catching up. Kind of. Not really, but man, I'm still way behind, actually. <laughs> this is from Buddy at Slapdash Minis. Hello there, my friend. Well, I finally got to fixing up the studio. What a mess. Once I got some things in order, I sat down for some painting. Episode 48 of Way of the Brush kept me distracted while I was cleaning. And episode 49, while I was working on the Malifaux Commission... Seen in the attached, attached picture, I painted these guys with a purple and red and yellow, and they looked a mess. LOL. So I resprayed the purple with the white highlights, then back over all the purple with the old warlock purple. Still wet, and still in perfect painting condition. Oh, cool. Yeah, warlock purple is a pretty fun color. It's amazing how the old paints actually hold up. To the tests of time, and as you can see, this Malfo crew is now looking pretty pimp. Pretty pimp? Pretty pimp. <laughs> it's looking pretty pimp. <laughs> what? <laughs> Keep the shows coming, bud. Good luck on episode 50. Wow. I will visit again soon. Tylor. And of course, Tylor being Tylor, forgot to send the picture in that email <laughs> oh wait where the hell am i here we go <laughs> just painting with pictures derp <laughs> 
Oh, he sent the same damn email again. He sent it twice. What a, what a guy. <laughs> so, anywho, look at that purple. That's the old school warlock purple. That's, that's um. What edition of paint would that have been? That'd have been like the third edition of that paint, because they had the old circular bottles, and then they switched to the colored ones, and then that hexagonal. Yeah. And then from that hexagonal, they turned to those screw top lids, which were a complete disaster. But anyway, the purple on these guys is a snazzy. I dig it, dude. Okay, so I see it looks like you're appreciating, and then you slap that purple on there. Very cool. I still have yet to pick myself up a, um, <laughs> like he's got, I like how he deliberately throws his little sticker in there, too, eh? <laughs> Shameless self-promotion, of course. Hey, I fully endorse that. Because he's, he's a commission painter, and he, and he does stuff out of uh, London, Ontario. and Yeah. Good good quality work, as you obviously can see. But I do, I do dig it, Tyler. And, you know, keep him coming. And he does have to visit sometime soon. I have to have him on the show again. Although last time I had him on the show, uh, things went awry. And, um... Yeah, I don't know what the heck happened, but things went awry. And yeah, there was all sorts of bugs that day. But because he was here, he did convince me to do continuation of the show. Because remember, the show cut out, and then I started it up again. And yeah, it's a pain. It's a pain. 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 Tolo. Consoles. Psh, PC gaming. I used to be a PC gamer. But then I got tired of PCs, hence the Mac. <laughs> and I don't really play a lot of PC games. I don't really play a lot of video games anymore. But, yeah. Tolo, Battlefield 4, Titanfall, Sniper Elite 3 are in my rotation right now. Really? How do you have that? Like, how do you have that much time you can play that many video games? Get more painting done. Never mind the video games. <laughs> Spetsnaz, Def, BF4. How's Titanfall? Titanfall, uh, I've, I've watched my son play that one. That one's actually pretty cool. I, it's... I dig it. Um, you know. There's a new one coming out. He was playing the, the demo for, I think it was Destiny? I think. He was playing that one. That one's kind of cool. Kind of looked like Titanfall, but... More dancing. <laughs> you can dance in it for some strange reason. Yeah. Knack, knack, chack, knack. <laughs> Sound like those aliens from uh, Mars Attacks. Knack, 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 knack. Xbox One is okay. Lack of really next gen games for either. Nothing I've played on so far made me think, wow, 360 couldn't have done that. Interesting. Have not heard a review like that. Very good. Thank you. I will heed your advice. Dave Patel, I still have that Warlock purple paint. <laughs> I got rid of a lot of mine, actually. Uh, once I started, you know, stocking up the new GW paints, yeah, I started getting rid of I kept a couple just for nostalgia's sake. But, yeah. Sorry. Distractions. <laughs> Knack chat. Space Hulk game looks pretty, pretty waiting. Looks pretty. Oh, it looks pretty. Waiting to see some in-game footage of it. Yeah. Because they can, they can hype it up in the trailer all they want, right? And then as soon as you play it and it's all clunky and, you know, you're only getting 20 frames a second and, you know, it's annoying. It's annoying. It's annoying. It's annoying. Annoying. Jim White, Chris, which event at a powwow should got to first? Dancing or art show? Chris, which event at a powwow should go to first? Dancing or the powwow? Well, if you're going to go to a powwow, I definitely would recommend being there a little bit earlier before the grand entry um, and being present for the grand entry. Now, you can't take photos. Well, you shouldn't take photos of the grand entry because it's kind of disrespectful. Not kind of. It is. And but it's, it's just really it's meant, you know, for in here. Right. When you observe the grand entry, because the grand entry is a grant is a great spectacle. Because all the dancers, young and old, uh, and we also carry all the uh, the flags. We honor the flags, the standards, and 
it's a it's a wonderful spectacle to see and so as the drummers drum the dancers all come pouring into the circle and oftentimes it's just because there's so many and it's all dancers coming in for the grand entry that it's it's really a wonderful sight to see that many people all dancing and especially when everybody's all done to the nine and you know wearing their their fanciest duds i've got a bunch of pictures on my facebook of the pow i attended last weekend and i still have more to go through because i got some really good ones of the evening with sunlight you know at that magic hour kind of lighting going on it's really nice got some nice ones of some girls there and they got the nice feathers and everything like that some really nice pictures so any of you guys who follow me on facebook you know you're used to that anybody who doesn't don't worry about it <laughs> but anyway yeah grand entry definitely catch that and then oftentimes after grand entry you'll have um you know you particular dances uh oftentimes the intertribal ones are you know you're free to participate in um yeah so don't be afraid to jump in there and you know and dance alongside people because again it, during intertribal if it's like you know um because oftentimes sometimes we'll have ones where it's a story time where you know they'll tell a story you know like the one i attended had a great one where it was uh recanting a story of or uh, retelling a story of you know a warrior looking for his friend and then finding his friend and then getting his friend off the battlefield and so it was a really wonderful piece that was done and it was great with all the all the uh, traditional men's dancers out there and they're all reenacting this it's it's almost a ballet at times too that's that's another way of kind of looking at it um but yeah after grand entry you know catch whatever dances you want uh watching the girls dance i love um the sh fancy shawl females fancy shawl it just looks great uh, oftentimes they're emulating um you know like the movement of a butterfly that's often what what the, the dance is inspired by and so when they dance and you get some of the really really good ones where they can just kind of like hop into the air and with their shawl in the air and everything it's just it's wonderful it's wonderful definitely would recommend anybody out there go 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 to a powwow feel free to go to a powwow and enjoy because that's what really what they're all about it's they're all about community and you know oftentimes people you know think you know uh native americans and that drum and they imagine the war paint and it's all scary and they're all you know everybody's hooping and hollering and you know down with whitey kind of things and no that's not what it's about it's not that's that's only racism that you know spurs that kind of thinking it's no no it's all about community and you know sharing and love so feel free to go <laughs> don't be afraid you're gonna get scalped at a powwow or something like that because that's that's just racist to think something like that <laughs> and that's fear racism stems from fear so on that note jim yeah thanks i'm going today after the show i shall heed your advice well if you're going after the show jim and let, if you're in the same time zone as me you and if it's powwow today's what saturday yeah you've already missed grand entry but they usually have an evening grand entry so catch that one uh typically it's like when if they usually after dinner break and then they'll do another grand entry at seven or six depending on which what time they're they're running but it's not very um strict as far as times it's often you know uh, very it's very very wide open it's, you know they say seven but it's more like seven ish <laughs> you know but again you know, yeah the only thing is and i and, and actually this this occurred last weekend when i was uh ipping with Kong, that um because i had people from because we there was people from um there was people from finland there was a couple from germany um there was some from france that i met like there was people from all over the place come because the powwow that i attended um it, it was one of the bigger ones in in ontario and so like there was people all over the place and it was really great you know, and it's great to see people from all over the world come and you know attend these things because you know it's knowledge and it's sharing and you know it's it's good to, it's, it's just good it's all good it's all good and they were asking me because i was taking pictures and they were asking you know it was it okay to be taking pictures and really it's only 
if you want pictures of a particular dancer, you know, or you know, somebody who's you know in their uh, in their getup, you know, ask their permission, of course, uh, when they're out there dancing and stuff like that. Uh, typically, you don't take photos during the grand entry. Okay, don't take photos of that. Don't film it. Don't photograph it. Don't you know? It's supposed to be for here and here, mainly for here, right? And also when they do an honor song, when they do an honor song. So if they're honoring a particular person or, you know, something like that, yeah, you typically don't do that. You don't photograph it or film it or anything like that. But like like intertribal, when they say it's an intertribal dance, uh, which means it's wide open to everybody, you know, and you'll, you'll get little kids and old people, you'll get a whole mix of people in there. Feel free. Photograph. You know, have fun. But, yeah. So. And then shop. Check the vendors. You know. <laughs> um, Tolo. At Chris. Finally tracked down. Way to brush episode two on Mini Wargaming. It says to go to Justin TV for the video. Only problem. They shut it down June 15th. Yeah, well. Too bad. I don't know. I'm not in control of that. <laughs> episode two is lost to the annals of the internet you know what though i think on this computer i think i still have some of the I, I might still have all 10 episodes that were on uh in the vault they might still be on this computer because i think at the time we were recording them as we were broadcasting because we would no we would i don't know seems so long ago it was only like a year or two ago <laughs> Daniel Ebling, Chris, did you read my email? I forgot to include Way the Brush in the tagline on the email. My email is Chateau Ninja. I hope you get to it. <laughs> Other words, shut up, Chris, and read more emails. <laughs> I, guess, I guess I'm getting. I guess I'm getting told. Uh, you know what though? Um, Shadow Ninja. Did I re did I read an email from Shadow Ninja? Does anybody remember? Because Poor old Chris doesn't remember. Um, I am going to go ahead and say I did not yet. I will, but I did not. I don't know. There's a bunch of emails. I can't tell. I have no idea because Daniel Ebel yeah no because we've been talking back and forth have we not Daniel or is am I thinking of somebody else I might be thinking of somebody else <laughs> uh, when did you send it Daniel Daniel oh Daniel Daniel, Daniel, yeah, we were talking back and forth about the Robotech stuff, right, Daniel? But I don't remember. I don't remember a particular email that you, yeah, because maybe you didn't have it tagged for Way of the Brush, and so maybe I left it as a personal conversation. I think maybe that's what I did. Yeah, that's very possible, Daniel. That's might have what that might be what I did. And on that note, I am going to read an email from Shannon White, Aquabolt. Hey, Chris, wanted to thank you for answering my question the other day. Anyway, I've completed some models in my paint scheme, but I want to play a game or two before I buy more, so I can figure out what I need, but I want to add a protective layer. Anyway, as I live in an area that can get fairly humid in the summer, about two hours north of Welland by car, or hour as, as the crow flies, and I'm not sure if that would affect a matte, prey or matte spray on protector. As I live with my sister and her three children, I don't... I don't like the idea of a spray in the house. No, I definitely would not recommend that. Do you have any suggestions for protecting the models? Thank again, and I'm including some pictures, not great ones. I apologize, of my completed circle 
Thanks again, Lady Soria. Soria, a.k.a. Shannon White. P.S. I apologize for Kaya's face. I am not used to doing such small faces or any human faces for that matter. <laughs> okay, so here's a picture. Oop, let's uh, get a better angle here. There we go. Okay, so really quickly here, as far as the spraying. I don't know if you have a, um, uh, an airbrush. If you do have an airbrush, then, you know, just loading your uh, varnishes into the airbrush, obviously, because you, you still need a respirator, but it's better to have a spray booth as well. Um, and kind of if you have a spray booth, like, no, you, you can't really use the spray cans. Um, but anyway, if you have a spray booth for an, with an airbrush, you can lay your varnishes down and you don't get that really odorous um, smell from the spray cans, from the aerosol, right? Because really that's what the danger is of spray cans in, inside, is the, is the aerosols. Otherwise, you're going to have to lay the varnishes down by hand. And when you're laying them down by hand, it can be kind of tricky because uh, if you've done any really nice, delicate layering where you've been glazing your highlights or anything like that, you run the risk of, because those layers are so thin and light, you run the risk of, of, of destroying those layers when you lay a varnish on by brush. But if you're not really concerned about that, then yes, laying your, your varnish down by brush. Otherwise, um, yeah, humidity. Humidity is always a danger around here, but it's not too, too bad. If you're only two hours north of us, it's not too bad. But, yeah, you just got to kind of, you know, wait until you have a nice, solid, sunny day. You can leave the models outside for a little bit. Not in the sun. I really wouldn't recommend that. As often you can kind of change things and, you know, kind of run into some problems there. Because you get the te temperature differential. It's just like when you spray in the wintertime and you get that temperature differential. It can cause cracking and, you know, flaking and what have you. So that's always a danger. <coughs> but... Yeah, so, no, your, your only really decent option is doing it by brush. I don't know if you have an airbrush. If you do have an airbrush, then, you know, it's that's an easy fix, right? You just lay it down by brush. You don't have to worry about aerosols. But, yeah, so, anywho, on to the circle. Very cool. I dig it. I like it. I like how you got really nice control here inside the... Because, like, the one thing that gives me a headache with circle models is all the dang runes on everything, you know? This is good. A little heavy on the wash on the cloak, a little bit. It's kind of hard not to get real heavy on the wash when you got all that armor and you got all that detail in there. But, very cool. Ooh, I like, I like the face. The milky eye. The milky eye. For cloth bits, I don't know if you want to go for something that's more like the armor scheme. You know what I mean? Like kind of, not so much like a brown, but, you know, I might want to change that up. Just create a little bit more visual. But very nice. You got like a little cross for your uh, front markers, I take it. I guess that's the center point. <laughs> now... You have these other lines indicating. What are, what are these other lines indicating? Because I can see, like, this is the halfway point, and so the front is over here. But what are these other? Are these just are these just design that you just threw those on just to keep with the whole uh, circle vibe? But very cool. And I can see, you know, because she's working with um, playing pieces as well. That, yeah, you really do want to protect them as well. Very important to protect your models. Gaming pieces, protect them. Some people say, ah, you don't have to protect the plastic models. But, yeah, you do. You should. Because the grease in your fingers and the oils and stuff like that, just... <laughs> Daniel Ebling. No, it's me, Chris. I sent it yesterday. Really? You sent it yesterday? 
Well, then I have to have it, right? You sent it yesterday. Oh, right there. Yeah, you sent pictures of your uh, towel flyer and looks like a YouTube shot of something else. Yeah, yeah, I got that. I don't know if I'm going to get that today. <laughs> but I will get to it. Oh, I will. Believe me. But yes, I did get, I did get your email, Daniel. I did. I know I haven't gotten to it. But I did get it. And I will get to it. At some point. Instead of just sitting here staring at the camera. Maybe I should read an email. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Zanto's question. How to bend plastic card? Would hot water work or do I or do I some kind of special equipment? Well, hot water in theory with the white PVC plastic should work. But you're talking about like really, 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 really warm water hot probably scalding hot and even then i mean like because like if you like it all depends on what you're doing with the plastic card right <laughs> like what it like what do you need to do like are you going to create a banner or do you need to just like bend a, like a little ribbon like you know a a hot air gun you know they're kind of like a hair dryer a hair dryer in a pinch could work You'd have to keep it very close, but a hair dryer, you don't get a whole lot of control as far as how much heat versus a hot air gun. Um, you can pick them up at most hardware stores and the, oftentimes they're used just for like, you know, sealing windows, like putting that plastic seal on. Uh, there's very many uses for a hot air gun. Um, and they're usually not that expensive. 20, $30 range, um, Canadian. And they're very versatile. You can use them for a lot of things. But sealing your windows in the wintertime is really the main purpose. Like around here, I see a lot of it for. But a hot air gun. We have one we we're using. We, we picked one up when we were doing the dark potential uh, shrink wrapping because we did all of that here. And we've had the hot air gun. And I've used it many times since then uh, to do stuff. Now, <clears throat> the heating up the plastic. Now, if we're t are we talking about plastic card? Yeah, we're talking about plastic card. So if you were doing it, say, for example, you were going to make like a banner, you know, you were going to create like a uh, plastic card banner, you, using water, see, I've never really used water, but I imagine it has to be quite, quite warm because when I use the hot air, hot air gun on all its lowest settings, it didn't take that long to melt the plastic card to the point where I could bend it and shape it. <clears throat> The other thing that you have to watch out for when using like a hot air gun, like the hot blower, or even a hair dryer for that matter, is the plastic will deform. So <clears throat> if you have cut like say intricate shapes, like say for example like a banner, let's stay, let's stick with the banner. I don't know what you're doing with the with it, uh, Doctor Zantos. I don't know if, what you're using the plastic card for, but <clears throat> there is some deformation. That occurs so say for example the banner and it had those little end pendants you know those i don't know what they're called but they're like little pendant shapes like little, little triangles at the ends or different little rectangles you know what i mean like you see some banners like that right when you're using the hot air gun sometimes those corners will prematurely bend before the rest of that plastic is ready to bend and so you get all this funny shaping occurring um also if it gets too hot you can kind of like you know when you roast marshmallows and you get that little bubbling happening that's going to happen also on the plastic card as well. Cause the PVC plastic is very soft to begin with, right? Because to, to cut it, you don't even need to cut all the way through plastic card. You can just score it and then bend and break it. And you know, and so when it's heating up, you can get those little bubbles occurring on its surface because essentially it's boiling and yeah, that's a pain, but I've never used hot water to bend plastic card. I imagine if the plastic card was really, really thin, like if you were dealing with say point, 002 plastic card hot water should work now i'm talking like near boiling just to be sure you might want to check it out but you need like something like needle nose pliers to handle it because you're going to burn yourself um vice grips you know something with some clamping action or something like that so you can hold it 
I really wouldn't recommend it. But I mean, with the hot air gun, you also run many risks of, you know, burning your table. That's the other thing to consider too, with a hot air gun, as it's blowing directly onto the surface, because, you know, you want to maintain control or sometimes you, you want to create a bend in it. So you got to kind of do it on the shape, kind of like a hammer and anvil kind of thing where you're, you're shaping it on an anvil and you're, you're heating it up. You also have to be mindful of your table surface. So it's better to have, you know, like a, like a cutting board or a piece of big plank of wood or, you know, something like that, that can take the abuse. Um, but as far as, you know, really kind of good ways to do it, another way that is super cheap, takes a lot of practice and you'll, I'm guarantee you'll probably mess it up the first couple times you try it, is a candle, using a candle. I wouldn't really recommend it, but I've done it many times and I've messed up many pieces doing that, but that's also another option is a candle. You'll, you're more likely to set your piece on fire, but, <laughs> and if you're young out there and you you sh know you shouldn't be playing with candles to melt things, don't do it. I'm saying right now, don't do it. Don't. But all of these techniques all require adult supervision. So for any of you young guys out there who want to melt or, you know, shape plastic and stuff like that, it all requires. I guess another option would be to uh, leave it in the oven. But again, you, you, that's trial and error to figure out how long you have to leave it in there to heat that plastic up. So because, you know, like um, people who use vacuum form, like the homemade vacuum form, they'll take those shit, uh, thin sheets of plastic, put them in the oven, and then they have their vacuum board and then they have their plastic card on a frame and then they, you know, slap their piece down in the vacuum form, you know, pulls it and does it all. And yeah, but I really wouldn't recommend that either. <laughs> it's, there's just so many things that can go wrong with, um, but yeah, like Dr. Zantos, I don't know what you, what you're making with the plastic card. If you're just doing a banner and you just want it to be, have that fluttering in the wind effect, then yeah, I would just recommend a hot air gun or a hair dryer. Hair dryer might take a little longer because a hair dryer gets really, really hot, but it has kind of these upper safety limits versus a hot air gun, which can get really, really, really hot and really, really fast. And it takes a bit of trial and error to get used to how hot it, and how close you can get to an object before it's really heated up. And yeah, so <clears throat> I have no idea what you're working on, doctor, but yeah. Um, now, if you were working on say, um, you know, like resin and you were trying to reshape resin, then the hot water technique is better than a hot air gun because you're more likely to melt the entire piece. Whereas the hot, whereas hot, hot water or really hot, really warm, I should say really warm water is better for working with the resin, but that's a different subject. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of what else, what all you need to do to bend uh, plastic card. There's really not a lot because even if you're doing like little ribbons, like say, for example, you're creating like, you know, banding on armor or something like that, or like a shoulder pad and you're creating that trim, you really don't need to permanently bend it as you can glue it to the surface and it will stay because there's really not enough, there's really not a lot of tension in soft plastic like that. PVC plastic is quite soft and malleable, uh, which makes it really good. So for these kind of jobs, but anyway, um, let's see here. Knack check. I tend to use a eight, a Atten AT858 hot air rework station used for miniature electronics but has a thermostat which goes from 100C to 470C, adjustable airflow, and can be found for about $40. Knack check, send me an email with that because I'd like to check that out because sometimes I do find myself doing that and often, but uh, yeah. If you're doing just banners, um, green stuff, green stuff, flatten out green stuff, once it's almost, like once it's getting to the point where it's very stiff, you can create that little curve in it, but that's that's a whole other video on <laughs> on making banners. <laughs> um, Dave Patelio, my father-in-law, melted a pair of running shoes in the oven. 
True story. <laughs> Dr. Zantu just had in a wild idea of making a bigger kind of shoulder pad on my project and thought about and thought about it if it looked as round solid piece. Oh, like making a making a shoulder pad? Interesting. Or are you talking like a shoulder pad like a cosplay kind of big shoulder pad piece? I don't know. I don't know. Knack check. Does anyone still make banners with old toothpaste tubes, oil paint tubes, or anybody else use plastic card these days? I don't know. You know, like with those tubes, because as oftentimes those things have lead in them, and or uh, there's something else. It's not terribly good. No, it's not lead, but it might be a special coating. I don't know because it it's, it stays fairly malleable. I remember a, a long time ago, yeah, um, using the uh, foil from uh, toothpaste tubes for banners and things like that. Sorry, I'm reading kind of these comments here. Red Dragon 1971. I use a hot air gun to add the curve to solid wood recurve longbows I make. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, if you're if you're using that for, for big old pieces of wood, that's going to melt that plastic card fast. <laughs> longbows. You make make big longbows? Send me a picture of that, Red Dragon. I'd like to see that. I'd like to st Or even a video of you shooting one. Because I'd like to see how accurate it is. Because, you know, if they're good, you know, maybe Chris, uh, maybe Chris, uh, you know, f uh, finagles his way of getting one off you. <laughs> Uh, let's do another email really fast. What time are we at? Holy crap, it's almost two. Jeez Louise. All right, this is, for, man, this text looks really small. <laughs> or is it me? Or am I having a stroke? This is from Tony Danny. Hello, Chris, it is me, Tony Danny. <laughs> Tony Danny. Tony Danny. I haven't messaged in a while due to my lack of a computer, but in that time I have devised some interesting mechs out of parts of old tanks with botch paint jobs and broken parts. Interesting. If you look at the bigger one, sort of torso part is actually the turret of an M3 Lee and the shoulders are turrets from a T28 and the bottom part, bottom white part is actually the top of one of those orange prescription pill bottles. I didn't get the paint, the bigger one yet, but have started with the base coat on the gray one and I would like to know what you think of all this business and if you have any of these or and if any of these could come into play with my Warhammer hobby P.S. How would one make paint freshly severed arm for a space marine? Whoa, just total left gear there <laughs> Now this is very cool I like this, I like the little bullet holes too but you must have did that beforehand, right? Because it looks like you're like repurposing kits. But it's very cool. This looks very like dust tactics. <laughs> this is very cool. And it'll, it, you know, and it would work. And okay, he's asked the question: Would it work within the Warhammer hobby? And yes, of course it would work. Of course, of course. And immediately, immediately, you're thinking orc. But this could also be a splinter faction of Imperial Guard, where they've had to rely on their own ingenuity, Adeptus Mechanicus, craziness, even Necron. Although it's kind of hard to see with Necron. Orky is obviously the first thing that comes to mind. And the farthest thing would be Eldar, but... <laughs> oh my god, look at this thing. <laughs> That's so cool. No, these are cool. Um, that that's that's comp oh, the, the, okay. With the dude sitting inside there, this is immediately thing you may immediately think of a sentinel. So imperial guard, I immediately see an imperial guard with this. But yeah, I dig it. I like it. It also looks like uh, Dust Tactics. It looks like stuff out of Dust Tactics, which is a game and, you know, uh, models and such that I need to get my hands on. But very cool. Tony Danny. 
Tony Danny? Was that all the pictures? I thought, no, I thought there was more. I thought there was a picture of... Oh, no, he wanted to know, how would you, how would one make paint freshly severed arm for a space marine? Well, as grotesque an idea as that is, and fun, <laughs> and gory, making a freshly cut point on a space marine. Well, <laughs> space marines, oftentimes, whenever you see people, like, severing the arms off a space marine, right, they often just sever the arm, and then it's just kind of covered in blood, and it, it doesn't quite work because really a space marine, like he wouldn't be bleeding right exactly from that armor point because it's a, it's a suit of armor. So like, for example, his arm, right? It's a tube. So the sword went through his, or the blade or whatever, the monster's mouth, whatever, right? Cuts the arm, cuts it. Let's say it cuts his hand right off. Say just above the wrist, somewhere around halfway up the forearm. Cuts through the armor. I think the best way to do it would be to gouge out or drill out the arm socket so that you're left with a slight ring of where the armor is and then taking something or even like um you know like a, like a toothpick a bit of a toothpick or something like that to simulate like the bone like we're getting really gory here people but or if you have like the zombie kits that have like those extra bones or you know things like that you can you pretty much use almost anything to simulate the bones but you put two in there to represent the, uh, what's that, the femur, uh, not, not the radius and the ulna. You put those two bones in there and you put some gore and, I mean, you have a severed arm and it looks, it would, it would be a fairly appropriate. Now, of course, there'd be no flesh, so you probably need to uh, put some flesh in there. So, I don't know, it's, it's really, it's kind of observational. It's really what kind of... Um, what kind of damage are you looking to kind of create, right? Because you have to think about it logically, right? Like a sword would impact into the armor. Would it knock the armor right off? Like, would it be so powerful a hit that it would take that limb right off? If it was an explosion, then it makes more sense. But then the explosion, you know what I mean? You'd have metal kind of bending everywhere, right? Because the Space Marines are wearing suits. There's no, like, it's not their flesh. It's, it's a suit. And... You know, if it was something biting through their suit, well, the armor would be clamped down. It would look pinched, right? The armor would be pinched. And so he'd lose his hand, but the armored suit would be pinched. And so it's really all about like what kind of, you know, what exactly, what kind of damage are we talking about? Because then you can start to reference what, like realistic referencing, uh, what kind of damage it would be. <laughs> But I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, on that note, I think we are done for the day because it is after two. And Chris has other stuff in mind for today that I have to get to. Busy, busy, busy. And I also get my, I got to get my intro done. But I've got the shots planned. I, I've got ideas for how the intro is going to go. So I'm hoping with any luck, maybe next episode. And I think... If you guys are available for Skype calls, message me over Skype that you're available and then give me like a time frame in which you, you'd, you'd be available because I'm pretty wide open as far as like when we could have these kind of conversations other than regular day, daytime, like the nine to five weekday, obviously I'm working and I'm not gonna be able to do it then. So it's kind of like, let's just assume, let's do it Saturdays. What, what time Saturdays are you available? Yeah. So. I think we're done for the day. We're still behind on emails, but that's okay. That's to be expected because I was off for like two weeks and I was way behind anyway. And yeah, maybe I should start doing Way of the Brush live, Way of the Brush email, and Way of the Brush Skype and have three Way of the Brush shows. <laughs> no, let's not do that. <laughs> let's not go there. So on that note, I'm going to call it a day. I think we learned something. Maybe, I don't know. Hopefully we learned something. But we, we might have had a laugh or two. <laughs> so take care of your brushes. They'll take care of you. And I will see you in the next episode. And I think I think we will do Way the Brush Skype calls. Call in. Way the Brush call in. Oh, you know what? We didn't even come up with a name for the Today Show. What's Today Show called? 
I don't even know. I didn't get to see if anybody told me. Really quickly, really quickly now. Oh, Pony Pledge, Pony Pledge. Buddy, my buddy Pony Pledge finally showed up. Or maybe he's been here the whole time, just funny message now. But anyway, I'm going to sip my coffee because this is the end of the show. And I'm just going to stare at the camera because I need a title to this show. What's the title of the show, people? What did we cover? What did we talk about? Emails? The Return? The Return of the Monkey? I don't know. Now that sounds terrible. Um, <laughs> we learn fire melts plastic. <laughs> yeah, thanks. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to use that one. Unless anybody's got anyone better. Anyone got, anyone got a better one? Fire. It's going to be way in the brush. Fire melts plastic. Has anybody got anything better? Now's the time. Now's the time. <laughs> no, everybody, everybody, everybody likes fire melts plastic. Okay, that's what the show is called today. Fire melts plastic. Fire melts plastic! Exclamation point. And in fact, somebody out there is probably going to go, "Geez, was he lighting fires on his show or something?" <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Santos. Fire, 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 fire. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, now we're getting into all oh, the monkey strikes back. Yeah, the mo It almost was the monkey strikes back because I was having all sorts of technical issues today. For some strange reason, my monitors weren't working. Don't know why. It's always one thing or another with this computer. I don't know why that is. No, because there was some kind of power surge, I think. Because there was power and I had to switch to surge protectors. But return to the mustache. <laughs> Dawn of the planet of the internet monkeys. Jeez, that's too much to say. Dawn of the planet of the internet monkeys. Dawn of the planet. Dawn. Let's get out of here. It's Saturday. It's a beautiful day out there. Let's go get some sunshine. Or if you're not into sunshine, then go paint your models. Or maybe you've been painting your models this whole time. In which case, I have to go paint my models and film something. I gotta film something. I gotta make. I gotta continue making art. I gotta continually keep making art. Otherwise, I might fall dead. I might fall over dead. You just never know. It could happen. <laughs> <laughs> I always loved that line in the original or the first Batman movie, the Tim Burton Batman movie. The Joker when he's you know he's talking to um, Vicky Vale, and he says, "I'm the world's first fully functional homicidal artist. I make art till someone dies." <laughs> I'll see you guys later. <laughs> I gotta get this intro done because. This graphic with the, with the beautiful lens flare now, but it's getting a little tired. I need, I'll probably incorporate the same thing, but I don't know. I need more flashiness and it's got to have music, music and lens flares and explosions. Maybe some explosions in there. <laughs> okay. We're done. We're done. Done. Done.